A very warm welcome to everyone who is joining this 2020 annual report Q&A live stream. My name is Yuki, one of the event team coordinator from Gibbon Conservation Society and my colleague, Ozzy. Hi, Ozzy. Hello. Hi. Okay, today we have here with me two amazing individuals, Ms. Marani Ramli, also known as BAM, the founder and president of Gibbon Conservation Society, who will be explaining in detail about the annual report, as well as answering questions in a Q&A session later. Not forgetting our guest today, Ms. Elena Morang. Hi, Elena. Hi. Hi. So I'll give a brief introduction about Ms. Alina. Alina Morang, a Dayak European musical artist born in Borneo, and she's one of the first women to play a traditional lute instrument known as the sape, which is created primarily for the male healers in Borneo to heal any physical, spiritual, and emotional ailments. Alina sings in the endangered language of Kalabit and Kenya with a hope to spread the awareness through her artistry and has been featured in various reputable media outlets and performed internationally. Besides, she also actively involves herself in conservation works of cultural heritage. Being a musical artist that fights to spread the awareness of the endangered and indigenous languages of Kalabit and Kenya, the commitment that Alina Mura has been making is truly remarkable. Without further ado, let's start our event today with a presentation by Ms. Marani Ramli. A quick heads up though, we'll be having a fun quiz later about the annual report, so do listen carefully as there are prizes to be won Okay, Bam, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Yuki and Ozzy, the event team. And thank you so much, Alena, for, for your time joining us um, today. So let me uh, share with you guys what had we done for the 2020, which is last year. Um, first, for, first of all, I would like to apologize on behalf of the society. It's a bit... Um, we're taking a bit time to present this um, annual report because uh, kejadian yang tak boleh dielakkan. But hopefully, this explain you guys what we're doing for the for for the year 2020. Okay, so let me share screen at uh, the presentation. Um, so for for those who just know our, us, uh, Gibbon Conservation Society, this is just a brief introduction about us. As you know, the main uh main goal or objective for the society is to cons to for conserving protecting and rehabilitating malaysia's singing apes which is as you know there are five species of singing apes in malaysia where uh, we also know them as gibbons uh the siamang la gibbon agile gibbons in peninsula and north bonion gibbon and a boss gibbon in borneo so all these five species are already in endangered, uh, in the stated as endangered in the IUCN red list status, and there are two more steps to be extinct in the wild. So under Gibbon Conservation Society, we have one um, main project, big project, which is uh, which is known as Gibbon Rehabilitation Project or GRAP. Um, GRAP. Um, objective or goal is also is for to rescue rehabilitate and release gibbons which are the victims of illegal wildlife trade because these gibbons their parents been killed so in order for us to send them back to the wild they need to go through um uh, years of rehabilitation so they can you know learn relearn their wild survival skills and then together with grab we also have uh, capacity building for local and international people and then we also do outreach and awareness um, locally and internationally to make people to introduce gibbons about the gib uh, to, to introduce people about gibbons and make them aware and the importance of keeping gibbons in the wild and also we are helping the the local authority uh, in enforcement assisting them to halt the illegal wildlife trade by the same time, we also do research at GRAB, uh, the behavioral research for gibbons at GRAB. So there's a bit about Gibbon Conservation Society. Now this is our activities report for 2020. So we start with social media um, because 
we realize that social media has helped us a lot in you know in introducing the society the gibbons to to people so just to let you know you guys know we start active using social media actually just when, uh, just last year and this is the where we have like a special dedicated team to to do our to become our content creator and then do um you know jadwalkan uh, posting and all so this is the result for this this when the team started 2019 into 2020 on the graph you can see the statistic um well, there's a peningkatan lah for our facebook and then instagram then we just started our youtube hopefully um in the future we'll have more to post on youtube so this is also our efforts to you know to continue operating given rehabilitation uh, project or grab we do few active what you call that is it activity for to fundraise for the project where we started simply giving and then people uh, students from university also help become our fundraiser for simply giving simply giving so inilah kita for until now we uh, we managed to raise 31397 ringgit and we also um apa nama uh, adakan satu program which is called CSR partnership program there are four four level uh, which is community partner supporting partner main partner and principal partner for people or for organization or public to involve with the project by becoming our partner so last year we have one company uh, Imo Sewa where they sponsored us 500 reusable uh, masks and we we managed to sell that mask the mask um, the selling is quite good because people like the the material and the quality of the mask so it's it, the income of the mask uh, help uh, given rehabilitation project um uh, this is our media futures just just to share with you guys uh, on 2020 itself we have been featured by 18 media from five different countries and one of it yang kita paling happy is from BBC and Smithsonian magazine and our grab student which is Ebony becoming the front cover for BBC primate series so even though we know last year we have pandemic and we cannot do physical events we all, we we try our best to educate and share awareness about gibbons and these are events that we kita dah buatlah sepanjang tahun 2020 there are nine uh, eight so, events yang kita jalankan sepanjang tahun 2020 and kita dah we come we realize that we can't rely 100% on public donation so we come out with our merchandise also and that's uh, the 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 mask that been sponsored by Imo Sewa and we came out with bandana with the tagline the bandana is not just a fashion is a solution <laughs> where kita boleh pakai during outdoor for outdoor and for gym and other activities okay uh, next and this is one of our campaign uh, for 2020 yang kita jalankan which is uh, uh, we call it menjejak simfoni yang dirindui where we create a um, short video and share it around to to introduce gibbons to people and then we in hope they can give us um, share the information about the punya given sightings di mana dia nampak gibbons whether the gibbons in the wild or gibbons been keep as pet this is just to let you guys know because last data that we have for our gibbons in malaysia is only pada tahun 1985 itu pun dah 40 years more than 40 years ago so we need the latest data for our gibbons population and what's happening to them now and the endangered status is actually we got it we need to we kita terpaksa borrow data from 
Indonesia and Thailand. That is why kita dapat status endangered. But actually, we don't know how many left in our jungle. So that is why we came out with this the this campaign lah. It's still ongoing. Nanti kita akan publish lagi sebab belum cukup data. Kita belum dapat data yang cukup untuk uh, dapat gambaran the the state the given population, the current status for given. Okay, so kita juga ada membuat uh, presentation dan lawatan kepada Raja di Hilir Perak about the project and dia suka about the project and we're looking forward for future collaboration uh, with uh, Tuanku Raja di Hilir. So that is about Gibbon Conservation Society and this is about the Gibbon Rehabilitation Project. So just to introduce you guys, this is our the permanent, how to say, volunteer lah, not really staff, volunteer yang work 24 hours at the center. We we call them, we call ourselves Grab Team. And these are the people that build the enclosure, they become the surrogate mother, the, you know, and train the intern and volunteers. So inilah muka dia 20, uh, for the staff masa, apa, volunteer masa tahun 2020. And we, this year we have another one new new permanent volunteer which is next year baru i show who who is she <laughs> and this is our student the 15 students of given rehabilitation project and as we all know and if you um like chantik lola betsy bella dali and daru has been confiscated by the wildlife department and uh we it's a it's a we it's a, an ongoing court case so now we only have nine we have nine gibbons at the gibbon reputation project so this is the the gibbons the current resident infants we have three umbon chinta and ranga and juveniles, we have two uh, sub adults, five and five adults. So all these gibbons previously kept as pet, where they are like, like I told you, their parents been killed. The poachers um, send this to uh, the tra illegal online trader post the much like, advertise them on social media, and then when people book or pay, and then they send by bus. So they these are the gibbons that went through all this thing. So just to share our grab layout plan for you guys that never haven't been to our center, we have three stages, which, which is stage one, we have the infant area or free ranging area for the infant to be with their surrogate mother while learning how to climb the tree, how to find wild fruits. So there's, and then um, not uh, a bit further from there, also in stage one is our quarantine enclosure where we put, uh, we keep gibbons that, um, that just arrived, newly arrived gibbons, uh, for one month quarantine according to, depends on their health status. And, uh, after they have, we are confirmed that they're free from the, any diseases, diseases, we move them to stage two. And the infants also, when they are ready, we see they are more, the uh, more confident without the surrogate mother, then we will introduce them to other juveniles, um, like we say, uh, like the playing team in stage two also. So, and then the stage three, where the six gibbons that been confiscated, you know, stage two are the gibbons that started the rehabilitation process, and stage stage three is the gibbon are the gibbons that already fulfill five criteria, only one or two, five or six criteria, only one or two criteria left to be fulfilled before we can release them back to the wild. So we do rehabilitation by stages according to their behavioral um, improvement. So these are the, the layout for that. So just to update you guys, last time we have seven gibbons at stage three, but when the, the six gibbons been confiscated, we need to move Elsa to stage two back at stage two because she's alone at stage three and she's like started much depressed so we need to 
ada back give her socialize again at stage two. So yeah, just a bit story from Grab. So these are the diet given the Gibbons diet and food intake per month. Um, oh, back stuff. Sorry, back again. So there, as you can see, we feed twenty kilo around estimated twenty kilogram per day for fifteen Gibbons, and the ratio is five. Uh, five two, which is five different, five types of fruits and two types of vegetables. So this seven types of combination of food ni kita bagi orang every day. Okay, next. So we also do together with the help of the veterinary from wildlife department. Once we uh, accept receive gibbons uh, from you know from pet. People surrender gibbons to us, so we will do a health checkup uh, for the gibbons first. It's in including uh, parasitology tests and blood tests, lah. So all the gibbons are already been chip. You know, microchip means we like giving an IC a number for them. But Ambon, our youngest gibbons, she still her weight is still less than two point five kilogram. So dia lagi belum dapat microchip. Hopefully, when she uh, achieve sampai 2.5 they boleh microchip lah nanti okay so gibbons progress uh, sepanjang tahun 2020 we managed to pair bella and ebony as surrogate sister dex bella and uh, dexter and bella um, as potential partner and daru and elsa as partner so we see the we we see them, we, how to say, um, kita dapat tahu dia adalah partner yang sesuai according to when when they started to singing together, you know. Me, male and female, when they re, macam reply with each other through singing, then we know they like each other. So that's why this, are the, what hap, this is the, the progress for last 2020. And also we managed to do a detachment for our juveniles, for infant Cinta and Ranga. And then followed by Embun later. So they don't need they don't need us to get mother anymore. Now they are more confident with other gibbons. Okay. So as I as I share about, about the object, objective of Grab, we did um, individual behavioral data collection means we access their their progress. How far have they go? And how how you know how wild their behavior the and how they can socialize with, with each other because as you know we follow strictly follow the international union conservation of nature for given rehabilitation for in order for us to release an, uh, a given they need to fulfill the seven criteria so that is why we we do the assessment betul -betul. so kita make sure that uh, we release the once we release the gibbons, they they can survive in the wild because the rehabilitation, um, according to the study, the re rehabilitation without proper rehabilitation, sorry, without proper rehabilitation, more than 90 gibbons will just die in the jungle after the release. So it's really crucial for us to follow strictly the guideline, okay? So the this is one of the examples for our successful case, um, surrogate sister Bella and Ebony, where Ebony, ni, actually, if you can see the graph, lah, they, um, Ebony, she don't really, she, 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 she have the, the really high abnormal behavior. You can see on March 2020, on the left side, dekat bawah, they had the abnormal behavior, you know, where she keep on self-rocking, hentak-hentak badan dia um, uh, in the enclosure, and she don't want to play with other other juvenile. So we just uh, after the after discussion with the team, we decided to pair her with with all the gibbons. Where we help Bella, that time we help Bella can teach her or can encourage her, you know. So once. Once we did that, the pairing, you can see Ebony on November 2020, her abnormal, abnormal behavior dah decrease banyak sangat. She, they just start 
um, slowly mem- memang nampaklah dia dah kurang uh, hentak-hentak badan you know self rocking on the enclosure so if if you want to watch the video of Bella and Ebony you can find on our on our social media or maybe you can like and subscribe our youtube okay guys <laughs> can proceed uh, next <clears throat> so these are the pictures for the grab internship program so there are many there are uh, modules which is including um, you know data behavior um group or uh, see i um, <laughs> we do camera trapping in the jungle you know we do night safari and then macam pr skill lah, how to present about conservation to to people um how to you know wildlife management overall and how to build furniture for the animals in enclosure to make sure they are free from the uh, according to the five freedom principle and then in the end we need to make sure also they having fun by you know main dekat river and all so you can see yuki and ozi start remember again they were punya kenangan at the center <laughs> so okay next um okay these are our financial report as you are guys as you all know we just rebrand ourselves from gibbon protection society to gibbon conservation society so just march 2020 baru our bank account uh, officially open so these are our income and expense um from march to december 2020 Okay, this is the ni lah dia punya charta pecahan according to percentage where we spend the money. Um, okay, so this is these are the plans for 2021, which some of them we already started doing, like um, Gibbon Garden. We already start planting fruits, a uh, food for the gibbons, and they already eat the the the, the, the veggies and all. And Gibbon pairing, we're going to pair. Elsa and Ud because we don't have enough adult male so we just give a um macam surrogate surrogate sister or fam- surrogate family so just to make sure they keep on socialize because you know gibbons uh, primates they need to socialize kan they cannot be like alone for a lo- really long time and then i'm also want to share with you our exciting new merchandise Uh, Malaysia singing apes and I'm endangered um, t-shirt. So both of these t-shirt will print it using um, RPET, recycled plastic bottle and uh, organic cotton. Um, our aim in the future to be more inv- to have more environmental friendly product and also to be a responsible seller. So this is the starting uh, point lah for that. And then we got uh, on June and July we're going to have a one month rehabilitation awareness campaign. We call it Path to Freedom. Just to later you can follow us on our social media to know more about this uh, program. And of course we want to upgrade more the Grab internship program. This internship program based on the feedback that we get from the our previous intern We are so happy we have really good feedbacks but we want to upgrade it more so you know to give lagi but impact lah more impact to our youth especially in Malaysia to empower them to to play an active role in conservation in Malaysia and then we want to recruit more volunteers to help at at grab and also for uh, for given conservation society where you know that there are people Apart from Grab, people there are few groups in Gibbon Conservation Society like event group, merchandise group, um, communication group that helping actively to make the society alive. And then we want to have more awareness and campaigns and events, and also we we make it a must to celebrate International Gibbon Day on October. So whether it's going to be physical or online. But we we're going to make a celebration for the gibbons. Okay, next. 
Okay, for you guys out there, if you guys are interested to know more about us or you want to help or you want to donate or to become our fundraiser, these are the details to how to become volunteer, to join the program, intern program or partnership program. Or you can buy our merchandise, you know, at our own given shop. And now we're having our bonfire campaign, selling our merchandise all over the world. So if you want to support us in that way, you are more than welcome. And yeah, that's all. Thank you. A very informative presentation indeed, Bam. It is really nice knowing about all the stuff that GCS has um, uh, involved in for the past year. And it's also really nice knowing where the money is spent since Gibbon Conservation Society relies heavily on public funds. So before moving on to the next session with Ms. Elena, we're going to have a fun little quiz section right now using Kahoot to test how much you know about Gibbons and the annual report that was presented by BAM just now. Winners are able to bring back beautiful t-shirts with two brand new designs made with recycled plastic, PET and organic cotton at Gibbon Conservation Society's merchandise store. So now I'll pass the floor to my colleague Ozzy. Thank you, Yuki. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy and now we'll be having a short quiz session for you all. To participate, simply follow the instruction that I'll be sharing on my screen and type in the pin. Please write your email address uh, as your name in Kahoot as it will be used to notify the top three winners about the prizes. Participation is highly recommended as mentioned by Yuki. There are prizes to be won. Right, for the first question. Two of the participants got it correct, and then another two got it wrong. So which crowdfunding platform had Gibbon Conservation Society been working on in 2020? Is it simply helping, simply giving, simply doing things, or simply supplying? Yes, oh, okay. very good. correct. Flo is currently leading the charge, followed by Steve and Luna J. Third question, how many species of Gibbon can be found in Malaysia? Yeah, it's pretty obvious, right? <laughs> wow, Steve has a straight with three correct answers. Keep it up. Nice. Oh, you got it correct. Flo is currently the top of the chart, so keep on going, everyone. All right, question five. Which of the following pair of Gibbon represent a successful pairing of surrogate sister? Good, six answers already. Oh, unfortunate. Some of you got it incorrect. So what is the previous name of Gibbon Conservation Society? It is Gibbon Rehabilitation Society? Oh, oh okay. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. Okay. 
So next question, how many Gibbons are currently at Gibbon Rehabilitation Project? Is it 9? Is it 10? Or 15? Or even 7? Good, most of you got it correct. Some of you got it wrong. We have two questions left. I'm going to chase up the chart. Flo is still currently sitting at the top. Last question. What did the founder of Grab, Mariani Ba Ramli, did to keep the project afloat in the previous years? Is it that she took part-time drugs at McDonald's? Wrong. Yeah, she oh. sold lots of her personal belongings. Right, good. So this is the top three. For these three person, please leave your email under the comment section of our live stream so that we can contact you for the prizes. Thank you for participating in the quiz and congratulations to the winners. Now let's head on to another exciting session with Ms. Alina Morang, who is a representative of the public and will ask questions that are sent in from social media. I will pass the floor for Q&A to you, Ms. Alina. Thank you. Hi, Bam. Hi, Elena. So, <laughs> hi. Thank you for joining us. No worries. Thanks for having me. I was really, um, when, I was look, when you were presenting just now, I was really uh -huh. um, impressed by the work that all of you guys do. So thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a couple of questions uh, through my uh -huh. Instagram page. And the first one is about operation costs. Uh -huh. um, what are the operation costs and what is the highest expense? Um, okay, our um, okay here as you can see. Um, actually, we the cost for us to operate properly every month is is around fifteen to seventeen thousand, and these are the pembahagian uh, where the cost goes to volunteer allowance, volunteer food, given food assets and our like uh, you no know, utilities repair maintenance transport travel expenses and also our you know our gut dogs yeah that's that's where the expense uh, our expenses are okay and since we're on this chat um mm. where do public donations come from are they organizations individuals mm -hmm. companies yeah so public donation comes directly from public individual public that 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 yeah say, uh, apa, transfer money to our account oh wow which is i'm so grateful for the for the support from the public as you can see they are the biggest contributor for this yeah. this project no are they do you know if they're mostly malaysians or they're from around the world they are they are malaysian and also from around the world Summer, the the balance is is there. Are the balance That's so nice? And do they do yeah. much? Um, I know like some um charities or some foundations or organizations they have like a monthly donations that people can sign up to where they you know much. I'm like I'm gonna I wanna donate mm -hmm. uh, a hundred ringgit every month and mm -hmm. they do that or is it more just like one off donations? Um, I do young what monthly donation they did, but we belum like kita belum ada lagi yang a system yang we can macam you know some big society they potong dari out of debit or something out of right? debit right uh, yeah. kita belum ada lagi we are working on it but mm -hmm. memang ada individual yang mas, setiap bulan dia akan masukkan and donate for us okay that's so nice yeah, yeah they're so nice people yeah now can you imagine the project bergerak atas the public donation sebab, sebab macam tu kan so this, yeah but that uh, must be because maybe I like how what do you know what motivates them to donate like have are there people that have that you've met personally and you told the story ka, or like you know do they have a personal experience with gibbons like what what is the thing that motivates them to donate um 
Uh, I, I don't have opportunity to talk to to most of them, but other few lah yang did contacted me personally. They said, um, thank you for taking care of the Gibbons in our country, and you know, they, these people they motivate them mostly because they realize uh, you know the the importance of the Gibbons. They start love the Gibbons, and you know, they they like our program. Yeah, they they like the the idea of the proper rehabilitation things like that that's so nice yeah <laughs> and um what is the difference between the public donations and sponsorships so public donation is like individual donation while mm. sponsorship is like macam other ngo uh, tolong kita oh yeah ka? Uh, other ngo uh, also help you yeah other ngo yang macam kita pernah dapat terima macam Like few thousand from MNS Johor, and ada satu NGO daripada Jerman yang contribute sikit dekat kita. Nice. So these are yang ni lah sponsor lah. What about uh, CSR projects? Do you have any from from companies, corporates? Oh yeah, that's that one is um, in kind punya where they give like in kind macam mask tu. It's mask. from Imo, yeah Imo Sewa. Nice. Uh-huh. And then. Um, I had a question about GPSM. You have a transfer from GPSM. Like how mm-hmm. is that because you you were GPSM before? So you see our income at the transfer from GPSM. So if you guys like, remember during February I rasa or March last year, masa first bulan pertama the pub, the pandemic hit us, suddenly kita punya fund stop macam tu tiba-tiba. Mm-hmm. I, I guess people are panicking. They, of course, lah, they thinking about okay, they not secure. They put your own, you know, on needs first. And that time also, um, we start a campaign, and but we don't have um GCS account yet because GCS ni kita baru officially re- register the card ROS on February, but it take ma it takes few months to betul betul dapat the account because of the COVID lah. So people still transferring money to GPSM. Eh, what, punya, what is GPSM? What's the relationship with them? It's Gibbon Protection Society Malaysia. So this one now is Gibbon Conservation Society. Why we change it to uh, dulu committee adalah orang berbeza. I'm just the advisor for the society. But then we want to make it more global and more, you know, lebih besar help kepada gibbons sebab dulu just protection of the gibbons now is the conservation of the species kan so right. it's a bit different but yalah so that's why kita rebranding and then kita change to the the GCS sekarang given conservation society the GPSM sekarang is no more lah yeah no more no more oh, GPSM okay it's kira macam rebranding yep betul okay got it okay. <laughs> and then I wanted to ask you, um, <laughs> how do you get your rent so low? Oh, rent. Where's the yeah. rent? Ah. Okay. As you know, we got the rent so low because k- kita duduk dekat rural area where sebelah adalah hutan. And <laughs> we don't have much coverage. And that's why the, their rent, the villagers rented the house really murah lah. It's, I'm pun during, I mean, apa masa first year I dekat sini I terkejut gila sewa rumah sangat murah kejutan budaya tu but yeah because de- dekat kawasan rural area the house daripada kosong that's why they rented out but it's really cheap oh so there was already ha- a house on the land there and then you found it for your project is it yeah actually the project we found the project site first then slowly we asked around for the house oh. is mula-mula rumah ni a bit jauh dari project ha- project site Right. But slowly, lama-lama kita managed to convince the nearest house at the project site to to rent the place lah. Nice. Mm. <laughs> so do you get quite a bit of support from from the village around there? Yeah, we actually macam kalau uh, before this kita the staff macam indigenous from indigenous people and local people here, but ada macam kalau start ada musim buah macam kita ada kekurangan staff sikit lah because they focus more on to ambil buah durian dalam hutan but we still engaging with the local people here lah. Okay, nice. Uh-huh. 
And then um, also regarding your expenses, why is transport, I guess, what is the difference between transport and travel expenses? And travel expenses is like one of the higher expenses over there. So mm. what, what is the travel expenses? Travel expenses is the like, petrol, toll, uh, any, any things that we need for us to travel between places. So... Like example, today pun, I need to travel like 40 kilometers ke depan untuk dapat a proper coverage to be online with you guys. Right, okay. So, then we're at the, this is where the money goes and also kita kena every once or twice a week, we, not, we need to go to the town to buy our supplies. Uh, so, that's where kita punya travel expenses macam tu lah, a bit high. And right. also for the transport, it's that's for our maintenance of our two vehicle, um, which is really old vehicle where we need to send to the workshop. Oh, Papa Kali, it's like night. This is the the hospital. Yeah, pay the hospital bills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so okay. that's why. Yeah. And um, my other question I had, but you already presented it, is um, oh. what are your 2021 goals um, and how is that going? Like, how's the planning going and the finances going towards um, achieving those goals? Um, 2021 goals is of, is, of course, we want to be more stable in terms of, you know, the program and in terms of the fund, the finance, especially, because... Um, Banyak juga, there's many programs that we plan, memang we terpaksa cancel because of the logistic issue and all. Right. You know, like, same with other people, I believe this COVID can really, memang, affected us lah as an NGO, as a project macam ni. And then, finance, is, as you can see, we started to, like, memang, push for, to sell our merchandise because... We're struggling, like finance ni just macam ad hoc punya finance once or for one and or, or two months ahead the, for operational. So hopefully um, there, are, there will be more people interested to, you know, to work with us to save the gibbons, you know, and then for companies to join our CSR partnership. So yeah, that's the plan for 2021. With, of course, spread more awareness and make make people aware the existence of gibbons in our jungle. Yeah, I think that's like a lot of the legwork has to be spreading awareness, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, because even when, because, you know, I, when I grew up, the kind of parents I have, I already know what gibbons are. But mm. Masa, I told some of my friends about this talk, gibbon this, gibbon that, they, they didn't even know what the word gibbon is. You know, they never yeah. heard the word Gibbons even. So even to raise awareness first before, I guess, before people will part with their money to support, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. is, is, is the cost for your awareness programs or awareness strategies, is it quite high? It's not really high. It's just the lack of manpower. Oh, it's, it's a, a lot of effort. Yeah, it's effort that we need to put in it. Like, um, just what to program to, we need people to, you know, to, to run the program lah. Mm, itu je lah. The, yeah. the lack of manpower. Sometimes kita terpaksa... Tapi you're working terpaksa, with universities, right? Yeah, we, we also work with university. Macam Ozzy or Yuki, is, they bekas our intern. Oh, and they are now okay. helping us dekat the society. Itu pun lepas orang kenal about the Gibbons, right Ozzy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no? that's That's why lah. So... Like you can see, actually, permanent stuff is just four of us at the center. Right. Mm. But do you have a partnership with a certain university? Um, partnership is independent. Like you just to to the students. Oh, no, not not yet. Belum ada lagi. Tapi, I mean, how do you find the interns? Um, they they con they find us through social media. I believe Ozzy, you jumpa how you jumpa kita. Cuba Ozzy share sikit. Hmm, I jumpa uh, GIP first dengan recommendation dari NGO sebelum saya sebelum ni yang saya intern dekat lah. Lepas tu through my friends and social media. Uh, my friends another in, another current volunteer of uh, GCS, uh, Jinwen, she, she recommended me to go for GIP. 
So she found it through media and then she suggested it to me. So we went to GIP together. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah social media is so strong. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's why I check up. Apo, uh, we need to establish that. Apo, to uh, content creator for social media, kan? This is their punya result lah. The. So what? We cannot work with social media much here. The coverage, macam tu. Oh, betul lah. juga. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're looking for a content creator now. We already have, but also okay. we we want if there are people want to help more with our content or, or edit video and all, we are more than happy. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, I wanted to ask you about your the case of the six gibbons. Are there any updates that you can share with us? Okay. Um. Um. Oh, we actually uh, apply like uh, uh, mohon untuk melawat the six gibbons at the National Wildlife Rescue Center and perhilitan gave us option to to apa melawat two weeks after uh, apa selepas dua minggu kedua selepas Mei so we already submit uh, the date kita the, tapi we haven't get any response from uh, perhilitan yet hopefully they get back to us lah before the date before the you know that we chose mm -hmm. and then the court hearing as you all know it it's the six given is part of the court punya proceeding so the hearing at the federal court will be on 7 july this year well what is the basis on uh, for which they were taken the basis for the taken i can't yes. i can't really <laughs> Yeah, I can really uh disclose. Yeah, this say much about the the apa? the court case kan. Okay. It's just tapi we try to get back the custody to rehabilitate like continue rehabilitation right. for the given. Yeah. Okay, well all the best for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's yeah. all the questions. Oh no, I had one more question actually. Um okay. why is there no data about gibbons in Malaysia since 1985? Mhm. Mm there's this for me uh, also like, a bit frustration and also that is why I started the society and the project because just to let you know Malaysia is one of the first country that started given um, research during 1970s kita negara yang pertama start then con um, continue apa, di followed by Indonesia Thailand but then suddenly kita stop don't know what's happened in between but Indonesia and Thailand still doing it until now and they already have their given rehabilitation project since 1992 in Thailand. And they have three now, a center to rehab gibbons. And Indonesia, they started since 1990 something or early 2000. So, but what, memang... what, makes, macam what, what is the, um, what would make gibbon research happen? Is it um, funding from universities? Is it like um, directive from government? Like what? What enables wildlife research here? I think interest. if you start, yeah, yeah, interest to, to you know, you, you, are, you, like you realize, you know, the, how to say, nah, the, you love, for, you start, you know, have feeling for them. Like, I don't know how to say it. Like, 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 you know, like, like, something like, unique, like, punya apa semua. Then sekarang banyak sangat uh, program for orang utan research and all. So I hope people bila dia learn more about gibbons, then they start to love the gibbons, have passion for the gibbons. Okay. So basically, oh. kalau ada orang yang memang passionate about gibbons sekarang and they want to do oh. research, it's actually very oh. possible to do. Yeah, of course. Gibbons oh, okay. need as much macam sebanyak mungkin research to you know to for us to learn about them. Okay. Oh. That's all the questions I had for you. Is there anything else you want to share? Yeah, I got um, a few questions that I want to add on. <laughs> that uh, the public okay. might be interested about. So when you first founded the GIP, uh, what were your goals back then? And have they been achieved yet? Um, GRP, when I, I first founded, actually, I just want to, you know, to rehabilitate the gibbons, lah, of course. Like, um, to see the, the progress from the traumatized gibbons, from the injured gibbons, and because of the behavioral data collection and assessment, 
we see I memang dapat achieve that goal where you know the seven criteria like masa mula mula sampai let's say macam one of our case lah Daru kan he he even bite his own hand you know because really traumatized because the owner beka, pernah pukul dia macam tu then he even bite his own hand so the progress where he start to you know start tak ta gigit tangan start berhenti cabut bulu sendiri this is the progress for us in in here uh, at, at the project so yes we managed to achieve the goal for the given rehabilitation project but not all because our six first batch givens yang dah ada you know one or two more criteria to be released sekarang ni at the rate, at the you know been confiscated so it's like but just to stop kat situ the the main goal which is to release them back to the wild jadi itulah hopefully we can get them back continue the rehabilitation and then release them back to the wild See, so uh, you mentioned about the criteria that should be taken into account before they are ready to be released. Can you brief us through the few criteria that should be taken into account before they are ready to be released? Okay, some of the criteria I share with you, you, you can find this um, online also on about given rehabilitation and translocation. But some of it is givens need to know how to sing before they can be released back to the wild. Because some givens sometimes, because they are tinggal dekat human again, they don't really know how to sing and then sometimes the the male they sing female punya song you know ini benda ni is not is not right for them to be released in the wild because bila you release you know given sing to mark your, their territory you know their house and also to find partner so if they don't know how to sing properly how they can mark their house other gibbons might you know just come and and steal their food in their house i say house here is their macam the area lah 2 to 3 kilometers lah in the jungle so that is really important. They need to know how to sing properly. And second one, they need to re- to know how to swing. Because some b- gibbons when bila they jadi pet, they walk on on the ground, which is kalau kita lepas gibbons that walk on the ground in the jungle, the bacteria of the stagnant water and the soil can kill them. They are not they, they are they're not good or uh, Working on the ground, they 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 supposed to you know walk on the branches, and then they need to know how to how to become a gibbon again, like socialize with other gibbons. Some gibbons, macam kita baru rescue, they kick other gibbons because they thought macam dia rangkap oh ni gibbons, I'm human. They thought they are humans because you you know gibbons ni dia memang sangat genius lah. Apa kalau nak compare dengan um, the normal monkey, even though the size macam uh, a bit smaller daripada other apes, orang utan or chimpanzee kan. Tapi bila dia dah dibesarkan oleh human, sometimes dia rasa dia human. So that that behavior kita kena rawat dulu. Dia kena kena bagi tahu dia. You need to know how to live in the wild. You need to know how to communicate with other gibbons. You need to follow gibbons punya, you know, uh, biological clock. Biological clock pun kita need to fix to help them fix because gibbons yang jadi pet dia bangun tengah malam, which is in the wild they should not wake up in the middle of the night to find food. Macam mana dia nak tengok? Sebab Gibbons punya vision are like us, they have binocular vision, they bukan nocturnal punya animals. So that kind of thing pun we need to fix. Uh, there are seven criteria lah for all this to... to, to that, is, that is why it takes long time, like minimum maybe five years for one individual, maximum ten years or fifteen years. Macam let's say Thailand, Gibbon Rehabilitation Project, masa 1990s. The first Gibbons they released 1992, it's only after 10 years of rehabilitation. So, that's itulah dia punya process for rehabilitation. See, those are very interesting facts. I think that's all for me. Okay. Any, any thing, any other question? Do we have question for public? <laughs> we? we have Hi. a question uh, which is how can people get involved in GCS? Um, you can, people can directly uh, contact our, on our social media at Facebook, Instagram, or even email us at contact us at Gibbon Conservation Society. And from there, uh, you will have a few options where you think you have more skills uh, at la. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Bam. You're and welcome. 
the answers are very insightful. But right now, um, I have some questions to ask Elena, and it's her turn to answer our question. Elena? Okay, you can grill me. Okay, so let's have a brief discussion about your new album. As we all know, Elena is a musical artist born in Borneo and is one of the first women to play a traditional lute instrument known as the sape and sings in the endangered language of Kalabit and Kenya. She just released her new album in April titled Sky Songs. So the first uh, uh, question is, what inspired you to write that album? Well, this album took about two and a half years to write, as in throughout the last two and a half years, uh, we've been writing. I say we because my co-writer is my cousin, uh, Josh. He's also my guitarist. And um, what inspired me? It, it began by me learning about our old stories, our folk tales about how our great ancestors lived in the skies and on Earth, and they could travel through a big waterfall. And in the skies, they also had like um, the kampong, they had the farms over there and everything. So, um, yeah, it began with that. And then kind of um, I started to just be in, in huge awe of the sky. Like there's so much wonder and mystery behind the sky. And um, a lot of our traditional songs also sing about thunder, about the wind, about the moon. So yeah, all the songs are elements of the sky. It sounds like a really amazing and beautiful album. So if people are interested, where can they get a copy of your album? So we released the physical copies at the end of April. We released in CD and cassette, and you can buy it online at Dandang store, or you can go to the store in KL also. And at the end of May, we're releasing on all digital platforms. Thank you very much, Elena. I hope your album is will be very successful. And uh, there is one last question from the public uh, for BAM. It was from Steve Watson. He said that he was lucky to hear several gibbons in Ulumuda and saw one. So where else is a good place to see gibbons in Peninsula Malaysia? And can you see them in Sabah or Sarawak? Um, in Peninsula Malaysia, there are like, people share, you know, based on the posting on social media, they, you can see um, gibbons um, in Genting Highland, um, Jandabai, um, apa itu, Bukit Larut, uh, where else? A uh, few area lah, um, but it's a bit difficult to really see, see their face, or even in, Pan in Johor, Panti, it's a bit difficult to really see their face, but you can, you know, maybe you just listen to their, when they're singing and then tunggu, wait there, take your time, and if you're lucky enough, you can see them. So, yeah, that's area. In, in Sabah, um, I, I, I saw gibbons in, uh, funerous gibbons in Kota Belut, and they can, you can see them also in Tawau, you know, Tawau Hill Park, and Lahad Datu, Tabin. Yeah. In Sarawak, maybe ask Alena. <laughs> Sorry, I belum lagi ada dekat Sarawak. Alena, where did you did you see any gibbons? I think maybe, in Sarawak. Maybe in um, Bako National Park. Betul ke? Mm, and ada. some Mas in uh, Semenggo, but Semenggo is also a rehabilitation center for orangutans. But I remember they had like one or two gibbons I saw yeah. there. Yeah, but they have Maybe gibbons. in the wild, like, I'm not sure. Maybe Batang Air. Mm. Oh. Okay. Okay. So maybe Alena, if you have um, about family or people that pernah see have seen gibbons before in Sarawak, we will send you the link for our Majajak Symphony yang dirindui. Maybe they can help us, you know, to locate these gibbons. To give yeah. us the look up. Can. Uh, can send it to all me. right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, one more question from Yok Moi Liu. She asks, okay. how do you teach gibbons that forgot how to sing? Um, okay, first, in order for us to encourage the gibbons to sing again, actually, not really 
teach them to really sing. We encourage them to start singing again. Lah, macam tu. To, to start encourage them to sing again, we need to motivate them. In order for us to motivate them, we need to make sure they're happy. So we need to provide a happy environment for these gibbons. And then, kita socialize them with other gibbons, where other gibbons pun, they had a young know how to sing, you know, the stage two and stage three. So they learn from each other, actually. But we provide a um, comfortable environment for to encourage them to start singing, to learn, yeah. He understood, Bam. So, uh -huh. uh, right now, we have reached our, the end of our live stream. So, uh, thank you everyone for joining us in our first annual report live stream, especially our guest, Elena. It's our pleasure to have you here today. And, okay, remember to check out Miss Elena's new album, Sky Songs, which is inspired by the stories of her ancestors featuring eight melodies and calming tracks. You can buy her album at tandangstore.com and find out more about Elena on Instagram at Elena Morang or elenamorang.com. Last but not least, do check out Gibbon Conservation Society's merchandise by clicking on the link on our Instagram bio or at the comments below. You are able to help the Gibbons while getting something stylish and functional. So once again, follow our social media to get updates on the Gibbons and more upcoming interesting events uh, Instagram at Gibbon Conservation Society, Facebook Gibbon Conservation Society, and Twitter at Gibbon Society. Your help is greatly appreciated since we rely on public funds. Uh, if you're interested, you could donate to our Maybank account, which is stated over here. Or maybe contact us at contact us at Gibbon Conservation Society.org. If you are interested to uh, volunteer or join our internship program, you could sign. You can scan the QR code right over here for more details. So that is the end of our live stream today. Thank you very much, everyone, and we hope to see you soon in the future events. Have a Thank great you. day. Thank you, Elena. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.